So what do we got today? Well, today I got a vibration after talking to my truck mechanic. I thought it was the drive line. He says no, because I don't have, I thought it was the drive line angle, but um, my long time truck mechanic, heavy trucks only, he said that um, there's no way it's in the drive line because my transmission is so smooth. He said if the drive line angle was off, I'd get a groaning in the um, transmission. So I think these rims haven't been off in like a year and a half because I've had no reason to take them off. But these are bud, bud rims. So they have the inner nut and then they have the outer one. I've already replaced the nuts once in this lifetime, but I think I'm just lightly heating them and then I'll let them cool down and that usually gets them off. You don't want to melt them or get them too hot and warp them, just a little bit of heat. The way that these work, you have, you put the inner rim on, then the nut is actually a stud uh, for the inner wheel. And then you, you put the ring, for the nylon ring against the uh, steel, then you put the aluminum on, rim on, and then you take the nut for the outer rim, and then the outer rim goes on like that and the driver's side is a backwards thread and the easiest way to remember these is on here on the end of the nut see the end of the nut there's an R right at the bottom and then on the driver's side there will be an L for a left-handed and this side is right-handed this entire stud is a nut there's a lot of stuff that can happen inside there with moisture and everything. If you're not using never -Seize, that's a lot to be frozen on there. I don't know if the, the big gun might do it. I might have to use the bar again. Nope. So this gun did three of them, but. So this is not just any pipe. This is actually the pipe that a drill press, a long time ago I had a drill press that broke. This thing is very thick and very heavy. It's the stand that the drill press was built on. I got them broke loose. I do have a 20 ton bottle jack under here. And I do have the front wheels of this truck chalked because, um, you know, I just don't feel like dying because I'm kind of busy. I don't think I got it. Got it? Oh, you got it. Um, got it. Nice. This side is left-handed, okay? So off, remember what I said. Reverse is always towards the back of the truck. One came off. So same 
same as the other side, only two one to come off. So If you're gonna be dumb, then you gotta be tough. <sighs> Too close to you. Now for the hard part. be dumb then you gotta be tough <laughs> all right see how that's tapered okay that's the lock and center of the rim but if your rim is old and worn out it goes in the hole, right? See, it's supposed to be right there. And then the next rim gets centered on the top taper. See? But if that sits too far in there, the next rim won't get centered. See how that's recessed? See that one? See how that goes in? It's supposed to be right there. But it's down there. That means the next one is not getting centered on that taper because the aluminum rim has a taper also. So that's, that's why these rims are no good. And this one, that hole is really bad. Look at, you know, that one, that one's really bad. We're like in the rim, like almost through the rim. That one's not, that one's not terrible on this side. But then you come over here and that one's really bad. That's another one that's not great. That one's terrible. Look at, look at how far we are on that one. So, you see how that has an L? That's because it's the left side of the truck, left-handed thread. So, goes through there, and it centers the rim. I'll show you. See on the back side? See it? Then this goes in the taper, like so. screws down and centers the aluminum rim. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. I mean, it's pretty, this is pretty, uh, you know, I don't know what to call it. This is, uh, to me, this is pretty self-explanatory. Taper nut, tapered hole. But some people don't know, so. I think what we're gonna do is we're also gonna change these rims out for the ones that I have stored that my buddy polished in that wheel polishing video that I made. Um, I didn't want to put them on. That was right before the winter. And now I'm gonna have him sand and polish these ones too. The rims are in good condition up until now. I think the holes, it's just, they've been put on and off. What wears those holes out, I think, is just being put on and off so many times. So it's just time. Well, I went to go get new rims. And I had to drive to the Big Rig Rim store, which is not like your regular one. And they told me that the guy was really worried about whether he could get these 
Um, he called them stud piloted. I call them bud rims, but we'll just whatever go with what he says. So I couldn't get them until Wednesday. Today is Monday. That's not too, too bad. So I left him the wheels. They're going to keep my tires, just change the rims. But I thought while I had this all apart, I was like, oh, well, let me put new linings and new drums, right? So, um, because this rear end is out of a 379, a 2007 379, sometimes when you have a truck that's been pieced together, um, you have to, like, bring the part there so they can match things up, uh... You know, or, I mean, if it's a part that has, like, a part number on it, it's just easier for me to bring the parts to my parts guy. And he flipped this over, and then he goes, dude, did you see this gouge? And I was like, oh, no, I didn't even see that. And he goes, yeah, you got to go back and do some fishing because you got a bigger problem. And, uh... You see that gouge there? You know? I came back and I said, oh geez. So I started fishing around, right? Then, I noticed when it was in the truck, the end of the S-cam was shiny, right? And guess what size it is? It's the same size as the gouge which is weird because never made a sound when I'm driving so what that leaves me to believe was and you know after seeing that right there the bushing for the S, S cam so this is an S cam obviously because it's shaped like an S and the S cam goes inside there and there's a plastic bushing in this one and the bushing is worn so that was moving and what it was doing is it was sticking out of the corner of sticking out of the corner of the shoe past the roller see the roller okay the roller is good but the way that it works is when that S cam turns on this roller, it pushes out here. But what happened was it was sticking out like that. And it was rubbing the drum. Okay, so. And that's why this shoe is probably cracked. Is because it got hot. So whenever your shoes are cracked, or your linings, whatever you want to call them, whenever they're cracked like that, that's from heat. But the way that it works is the S-cam, the shoes sit on this lip right here, all right? And they come over like this. And when the S-cam rotates, see I got it backed off from the slack adjuster. When it rotates, it pushes out on the wheel, which makes, like if, I can't hold my hand. Let, let me use this hand. It would go like this to the shoes inside the drum. All right, so the first thing to do is there's a little car to pin right there. Now, a lot of people don't do this, but I actually grease my, um, and put like spray oil and grease and everything on my, um, clevis pin or whatever you want to call it i don't know what it's called i think it's a clevis pin don't care that's the thing i'm not real professional with the names i don't really care you know it's a pin take it out see it's not rusted a lot of guys they don't lubricate these okay so what happens is when the truck sits for a little bit or even just you know going down the road and salt and grime this thing doesn't move that much. This rod out of the air can pushes on this just a little bit. That means this thing's not spinning around. It's not rotating or whatever. And then what happens is they freeze up. 
and then one day you go to hit the brakes it throws this on uh it you know we call it throwing the rod throws it that way and then what happens is is there's a lot of pressure going that way and not as much coming back okay so the rust and gunk and everything binds up this pin and then the slack adjuster doesn't return and then your brake is dragging that's why you see a lot of guys dragging their uh, brakes on a trailer that hasn't moved in a long time that's because of these all right since i'm covered in grease my wife was nice enough to go get me a new can of pb blaster we're just gonna soak all kinds of stuff I'm just going to shoot it right through here at some parts out there. Um, yeah. All right. She is the best. <laughs> You're going to want to put like blocks of wood and like jack stands. And uh, you, the biggest thing is chalk the wheels on the truck. Like a lot of people don't chalk the wheels on the truck. And that's not good because you pull on this truck and it rolls, it'll fall off the stands. You know what I mean? Originally, I got this rear end out of a 2007 Peterbilt 379. But this is a 1986 Peterbilt 359, right? And I changed this chuck, you know, the rear end right above your head here. Uh, I changed that and the axles to 390s, actually 391s, to gain some better fuel mileage, which years later, with the uh, current fuel crisis that's happening, thank God I did that. Just give it a good soak. I would love to have a shop because these rocks really hurt my butt. But... you're gonna be dumb then you gotta be tough let's see if we can get this clip to spin first because i think i this is the rear end that i sandblasted and painted before putting it in i mean i don't even at this point i don't even care if i break the clip to be honest with you because i think we're gonna end up with all new parts See, this this was not bad this bushing i mean i'm i'm wiggling this this s cam it's not even really it's not really moving up and down you know but we're gonna do it anyways boy is she frozen in there it's a c-clip it's a big c-clip right here Man, oh man. It's probably not gonna make a difference how much PB blaster I spray on it, but it makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Unlike, there we go. See that? It has some shims, like washers. I'm not sure we may be able to take them off. Just give it a little tap because it like tends to loosen up rust when you tap things. See these washers? The other side didn't have any of these, so I don't I don't particularly know what's going on on this side. But I will say this, the brake shoes on the driver's side were not the same brand. They were um, Eaton's and the ones, look at all the rust on this clip. The ones on the passenger side were a Spicer. So... Cause it makes me feel good 
a little more PB. Just gotta be careful. I don't wanna peen the end over. Okay. So, slack adjuster is off. This is an automatic slack adjuster. Um, this one here bolts onto where the air can bracket is. Now, see that bolt in there that connects to the um, tube? I gotta cut that because there's no way that's gonna come out. I'm just gonna put a new one in. So I'm gonna take the torch and cut that. That holds, it's a bracket to hold this to the axle. See it? So there's no movement. The other thing I'm gonna do is, um, I'm probably gonna heat up here because on the other side I had to do it. Um, and then, hopefully these bolts will come out easier than the other side. takes care of one that goes two alright that one come out a little bit the other side was just as bad I had to heat up this plate so it doesn't bother me at all because I understand that uh, I don't know where I was going with that This bolt is a problem because there's a U-bolt in there. See that? Can't clear the U-bolt, so I'm gonna have to get these bolts out. So that's not something that happened on the other side. The other side, I didn't have a problem. This bolt is a problem is a problem there we go maybe I'll do the bottom one too while we're at it maybe I won't all right shim now, you can take the S cam and then finagle it past the hub without taking the hub off because that's a whole nother nightmare we don't we are really want to deal with today. So that is what it looks like when it comes out. And it's got a splined end on it. And this one's probably not in bad shape, but we will see. So I'm gonna hammer out these last bolts and clean this all up, and I'll see you guys when we got some new parts. All right, so I'm cleaning these up. I'm gonna paint them. I've already pressed in the new neoprene or plastic neoprene, whatever, bushings, 
and I put the seals in. That seal looks like it's in backwards. That's for a reason. It doesn't match this one. This one is in that way, okay? So, yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you on the clean one. Okay, so this one goes in this way. These things go down until they seat themselves. There is, on the inside of this tube, a lip. And when you're tapping it down, I use a socket to fit. And when you tap it down in there, it'll stop. It won't go any farther. There's a lip. Then you put the seal in. Now, this seal goes in towards the wheel, okay? So the reason why you want this seal the right way, and I might lift it up a little bit, is so the grease gets behind the seal and pushes the seal out. Um, well, in this case, it would push it in towards the, um, the cam and tighten it up. And then when you're greasing it and it gets too much pressure, the path of least resistance is on this seal that's backwards. It'll blow it out towards your slack adjuster. You do not want, when you're pumping grease through these things, the extra grease to build up pressure and go out into your wheel and cover all your brake drums and shoes and everything. So this seal goes in backwards, um, like so. So the extra pressure blows out this way. I know that sounds weird, but that's what I was told by uh, the professionals. I'm gonna clean these up, I'm gonna paint them. Then I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna clean all this up. I'm gonna wire wheel here where I had to use the torch. Um, clean everything up and paint it. All right, I got new rims, inner ones, finally. This has been going on all week. They've had to order everything. My drag link for the front end that has nothing to do with this project. While I was there, he said, hey, your drag link finally came in. It had been so long, I actually forgot about that. But brand new S cams came in. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I got a tub of uh, Molly grease, fully synthetic Molly grease. It's not what I'm gonna grease these with in the future, but just to um, get them to slide in. You gotta make sure that you get the right side because there's two sides and I'm just gonna cover everything with grease for the S cam on its way in. All right, I'm gonna spin this around. Just a little bit while, while I um, have the slack adjuster off. And then uh, just to get some grease all the way around it. And I think that'll be it for now. All right, so this is the brake shoe or the liner, lining, whatever you want to call it. I know people call it different stuff. Um, I don't know why, but whatever. What you got to do is, before you go putting this together, what I like to do is, um, and like I said, I don't do this all the time, but what you do is your hardware kit will come with this little spring. You put the spring over the wheel, the roller. Then the shoe's got two holes in here. And what that's for is that's to keep the roller, I don't know if you can see, push it down in, then 
that spring little coil spring this one's being tough goes in the side of the hole like that and that's what holds your your roller in here um, then you have these two springs All right, that go in the side here, like so. You can put them like this way, or you can put them, uh, you know, opposite. But it it really doesn't matter, at least not to me. And then what I like to do is. I like to take the top one, see how it fits on that round bit, and come down with it, and then it should sit in here. And then when your S cam, uh, when your rod on your can goes out and pushes pressure on the slack adjuster, the slack adjuster goes backwards, rotating like this to make the shoe go up against the drum. It only takes like a little bit just like that so I found the best way to do this is put these in like that right get yourself under there okay see how it's hanging and then just watch your eyeballs and flip it up like that boom but here's the terrible part this is the heavy-duty return spring it does a lot of the work there's like a pin that goes across. Oh yeah, you can see it. You gotta catch it. So what I like to do is put a bar in here. Woo! And uh, yeah, just like that. I wouldn't say that that is like the safest way to do it. I'm just, that's how I do it. And then, just like that, I'll line my S cam up with my roller. And then um, I have to wait till tomorrow to jack the truck back up to put the drum on. I ordered um, spacers in here because the new style drums, they have a little bit of a gap to them. A uh, little bit of a gap to them, but I'm waiting, I'm waiting on those. The, the truck didn't have them okay it didn't have them but through my research and the interwebs i discovered that i can buy them from four states truck they are um to go from bud bud rims to uh hub pilot drums all right so what we got here is a slack adjuster Woohoo! now what does a slack adjuster do? This is the thing that makes your brakes work. I know that sounds like, oh, okay, Steve, tell us about it. Um, basically, when you push air in the can, this is like a ratchet. It's geared in here. It's got grease fittings. This is how you adjust it. It's a 3 8 but I actually have a tool for it. And then um, you see the spline in there. What this does is that rotates like this, right? I think actually it's like this. It rotates like this and rotates that S cam like I said before and spreads the shoes apart against the drum. But there's a little bit of hardware to it too. And make sure you never lose the little The little brass or whatever it is I think it's brass shim for your pin all right I put a washer on there um, the directions say washer first and then trying to find the right location for this I might have to back it off but when you push on this when the air can pushes on this see what happens here 
Yeah. New parts. Gotta love it. And that's really all it moves, to be honest with you. Not Maybe not even. Maybe like this much. It doesn't take much. They give you two washers um, in the clip. They want two washers per side. That goes like that and then gets bolted. This is the part of the thing that helps it, the um, automatic, you know, that like holds it. So every time this thing gets to a certain point, it, um, I'm trying to remember how it wor exactly how it works, but it's like a ratchet and this holds its position. So every time it goes past a certain point, like if, let's say the shoe wears out and this goes past a certain point, it'll click and then reset, you know what I mean, past it. Um, I know how it goes in my head. I don't know how to explain it better than that. So I'm going to put this big C-clip on the end of the S-cam. You just want to lightly tap it, I mean, and you want to hold it the, time, the whole time you're tapping it. Because if it flies, it's spring-loaded, so it's just like a spring C-clip. Anybody that's ever messed with a C-clip, a small one knows. But this is a big one, so tap it in, make sure... And what I like to do is tap the S cam back out flat like that. Just in case. This is the perfect tool. All right. I do have spacers coming for in here for these drums because see see because it's it's not right it's just not right i tell you so i gotta wait till those come this truck never had them i i want to put them on there because i think that's where my vibrations come from i don't think the drum is a hundred percent centered so what do we got going on here i am inspecting the rims for cracks because I found a crack I found a crack in one of them I'll show you good thing I had spares where is it right here watch out buddy watch out buddy <laughs> right there hairline crack coming out of here that's from when you go to the tire store and those guys just just rail on it with the gun so The more you sand it, the better you can see it. Right there. Um, I didn't bother to check the rest because once you find one, that's it. Rim's no good. I said it before, I'll say it again. I don't do how-to videos. It's just me out here, just some backyard jackass, just doing my thing. Don't follow me. You should get a professional tire guy to change your tires. But just to uh, continue with a little bit of entertainment. Um, I'm, I will film putting the last one on. The professionals use grease, like I said. I'm not a professional tire guy, nor do I want to be because it is a lot of work. 
Come on. Like, my hat's off to those guys. If you're a tire guy, like, you're probably laughing right now. But at the same time, hey, my hat's off to you. I have no interest in being a tire guy. No way. I know a guy that just dives on these and gets them on. But I'm going to use the tool to put them on because I'm not as good as him. And what I do is... There. There we go. Whew. I don't know where I got this from. I think it was Lowe's, Home Depot, one of them. And I basically put a ball valve on it. I fill it full of air. That's pretty much it. You really gotta hang on to it. Um, I've had one of those shoot out before and hit me in the knee. You really gotta hang on to it. And you gotta have the air on it while you're doing it or you just lose the beat again. I should say when these things are filling full of air, I don't stand anywhere near them. I got a valve way over there, I just shut it off. After a little while, it's got a pressure gauge. All right, I went around with the torque wrench I tor torqued all of them 400, then went around again and I torqued them to 450. Um, we're supposed to put these nylon rings in here, these spacers, but um, they don't they don't fit. To be honest with you, so I mean, I don't know. I'd like to put them on here so the aluminum and the steel don't what do you call it ah, they might fit all right now i just got to finish pumping off the wheels uh the tires and we'll put them on and then we'll use the torque wrench and we'll torque them again all right so when we put these on, uh, the valve stem is here on this outer rim, and on the steel one, it's opposite. You want opposites. There we go. I could take the gun and zip these all the way in, but I did just have these wheels polished, so I want to minimize the amount of scratching. What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go around with the wheel loose, you know, like with the truck jacked up a little bit, and I'm just going to star pattern this, so if it wants to suck itself in, it has, it, it has the ability to do so, the ground's not holding it. here the problem with using the gun is you tend to spin really fast and it just chews the rim up and since I just had these sanded or milled um, if you want to go back and watch the video it's a couple videos ago um, it was $100 a wheel to have my buddy do it. So I didn't really want to scratch these up. All right. I'm gonna drop this down.
Then I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna torque all of them. Okay, so my spacers finally came. However, these are the drums we just put on in the video. It's been a few weeks now. Um, well, it's it's probably been about a, a week and a half, realistically. So we went to work with these. Um, even though I kept telling my parts guy that I thought there was something wrong, I don't think these are the correct ones. They don't fit on there correct. And he was like, oh, no, it's fine as long as you center them and lock them down. I couldn't get them to center. I ordered these spacers from Four State Trucks, which don't really... These don't work either. Luckily, they were only 7 bucks per packet. So, you know, 14 bucks or whatever. That's a total waste. Those don't actually fit either. So then, I got even more aggravated because I started taking some measurements and everything. And I noticed that this center, from here to there, um, I was having a bigger gap on this side of the hub than on that side. So then my buddy Randall, who has that Oshkosh truck, if you want to see that, I got a video on the channel about that old uh, orange uh, Oshkosh plow truck. Well, he had did his brakes a few years ago, and he told me that he never got rid of the drums. He was going to do something with the drums or make a stand out of them or whatever. And he said, do you want me to bring by one of mine because I have the same style rims as you? So he brought by one of his drums. I put it on there, and wouldn't you believe it, this is the correct drum. And being that he's an older gentleman, the older generation is smart enough to save the receipts with the part numbers. And he did. And he texted me the part number from his records. And I got the correct drums after trying that one on that side. I already did that side. So I went to work and the parts place dropped off new drums which is a shame because I can't do anything with the drums I bought uh, a week or two ago because I already put them on the truck they won't take them back these two drums here custom ordered are um, $722 all right this is what I wanted to show you now in the book you know not trying to bash on my parts guy because he did pull out the book and he was reading it um well not the first parts guy uh the second place i went because the first place he kept telling me it was fine so i did some research and i went somewhere else that guy pulled out a book and he tried telling me it was fine and then i said no no it's not it's unacceptable i mean i can almost stick my finger on one side you know and then there's a big gap over here, then it's tight here. Look at the movement. And then... He was saying, oh, the book says if you can center them, if you can center them, then crank them down, they're fine. How in the hell am I supposed to center these? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not whining about it. It's just, it is what it is. It's the fact. There's no way I'm going to center these. You know what I mean? They're wrong. Watch this. Look at that. That is the correct drum. Yes, I'm out of breath. They are heavy. And I had to walk across the driveway with it. Um, look at tight and no play. When I move this, the hub moves and the studs. So I'm going to torque this, put this wheel back on. I'm going to torque everything down. The specs on these are 450 to 500 uh, foot pounds of torque. Um, you always want to torque these on. Um, I'm going to end this video on that. I hope you found it entertaining. And, um, 
never go by what your parts guy says if you aren't comfortable with something do like i did do the research and find out what it's really supposed to be check in on the next one is the struggle on there yeah uh, uh, uh. coffee